Hey everybody, it's Tim Hinton, the Beast of the Marching Arts. Thank you for watching this. I'm here with Dr. Christoph Thompson. Christoph, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Everybody, we're here to talk about music production and the very cool music production boot camp that happens at the Music for All Summer Symposium back this year, June 27th through July 2nd. So Christoph, thank you for being here to talk with me. Very welcome. So before we start talking about what happens at the actual music production boot camp at the Summer Symposium, I want to find out more about you. So tell me, tell everybody a little bit about yourself, where you are in the world, where you're teaching, that kind of thing. Okay. I'm currently the director of the music production program at Ball State University in Muncie, Indiana. That is uh, north of Indianapolis. Uh, we are in the School of Music of Ball State University. And I teach uh, personally the uh, music uh, recording technology one and two, and then the senior production seminar. And uh, we have courses in commercial writing and we have courses in commercial production uh, in digital signal processing, audio coding, immersive audio, really the whole, the whole spectrum of things you can do in, in music production. It's very cool. I think anybody that's a musician thinks music production is really cool. And it sounds like something that will be really, really fun to do. And actually, we're going to talk about whether you need to be a musician to do this kind of work. That's one of the things we're going to get to, everybody. But first off, Christoph, you're in the coolest place. Like, everybody wants to, like, be hanging out where you are. Tell everybody, what, what, where, where are you? I'm currently in our Studio 2. This is our, uh, I, our other full size or our other... Uh, quote unquote, main control room. Um, this one has the analog console. The other one has the digital console. I picked the one with the analog console because it always has more knobs and looks more exciting. It's more, has more that vintage vibe and whatnot. Um, so this is our studio too. Um, when the students come here, we'll be working right here in this, you know, uh, quarter million dollar console. And we'll be working also in studio one, uh, which is an, an even bigger space. And it's, you know, hands on the, the whole time. Uh, the students always have a front row seat, so it's very exciting. And it, I, I get excited every day I go to work because I get to play with all the toys. It's really cool. So I have to tell you, like the, I think part of like the what seems like fun is exactly what you're saying. You're sitting in front of this analog, what did you call it? Uh, console. Yeah, sorry, console. Of course, everybody. And, and like, there's all these buttons, knobs to turn and adjust. That just looks like fun. So on the digital one, are you just like? using a computer to adjust those things as opposed to using your hands? Yeah, in the digital one, it's usually in the box. Um, and they're, they're two similar yet different worlds, whereas here in the, in, on the analog, analog console, you have choices that you can make right then and there in the moment, and then it's recorded like that, right? If I record through the console, I can color the sound right then and there. I can add as much saturation as I want. I can EQ it right then and there. And that's what you would call you know, a destructive approach. It doesn't destroy the music, but once it's done, it's done. It's on there. It gets recorded like that. Um, it You need to know a little bit what you're doing. And the other way would then work in, be to work in the box. You record it fairly pristine into Pro Tools in the digital studio. And then you do a lot of things uh, in the post-recording process, so the mixing. And whatever, anything that would be in a queue, like on my console, would then be a plugin. So it would be just happen digitally. And uh, there's, you know, always this what's better, digital or analog. There's really, I wouldn't say it's it's a better or worse. It's just, you know, a different thing. It's It depends on your workflow. And it depends, to be honest, like 99% of the time, it's what the client wants. And other than that, it's just, you know, your your workflow that you choose. Right. So I imagine, like, if if you were doing the audio at, like, a live concert, then you would have to like make it sound right right then. And that would be sort of like the experience of using the analog con console? Yes, whereas now you have, so um, the there's an analog console and a digital console. The digital console will do everything the analog console will do in real time, just digitally. So if you do a live mix and you have a digital console, then it will apply everything in real time. Um, and it's actually becoming more and more common that you have a digital console for live mixing because you can recall everything very quickly. So let's say you have, you know, 10 different artists. It's like a various, like a, you know, 10 different artists on the concert and each one has like their own sound, how they like it. You know, during sound check, I save my different scenes and I, the next band comes on, I just, you know, throw them back on. 
So it's very nice uh, to have that kind of comfort. And then in the studio, the analog console has, it's a workflow thing, but it's also a, a sound thing. You know, they, they, you want that coloration. That is kind of the, the thing that you're going for there. Um, but yeah, the live sound, you, you will see both. But what's important is that you take care of everything right then and there. So there's always more thrill in the in the live sound because if you screw up, it you know you screwed up right there in front of you know hundreds of people. <laughs> Whereas in the studio, you know it's it's if you screw up during a mix, it's just you and the speakers, and you can just go back. Like you kind of go back and fix it right. Yeah, that's really interesting. And, and you're right. I know that a lot of um, in the mar world of marching band, which is sort of where we live a lot of times. Um, in the world I'm in, like they do that, those presets for different moments, for different sounds, different configurations for the mm -hmm. ensemble, or whatever, whoever they're trying to mic. So I do have some tiny little bit of experience while you're talking about there with the presets. And hey, everybody, I'm talking to Dr. Christoph Thompson. Uh, he is um, the, the main man at the music production boot camp at the Music for All Summer Symposium that is back this year. So now you just, in, everybody, if you have questions or you tell us, put in the comments, tell us where you're watching from. Um, or if you have any questions for for Christoph, so you mentioned saturation in passing. You sort of said, "I want to do the saturation." All right, I'm not sure I know exactly what that means, and I'm, I'm interested enough in this. Do you mind explaining that? Yes. Okay. So saturation is the addition of uh, harmonic information to anything. So if you want to think of just, for instance, um, the easiest way to think of just a simple sine wave. And I could add harmonics to the sine wave. So in the, in the frequency domain, and I would then add mild distortion in the time domain. So the difference between then analog uh, designs or analog gear and, and in the digital gear would be that an analog gear, as you overdrive it, will start um, add saturation, like a tube or a transistor will add different ways in which it fill up the sound you, there's this, you know, the trend where it is warmer, it'll warm up the sound, but what it does, it'll add really mild distortion that is pleasant to the ear because maybe it'll fill up the bass a little bit, or maybe it will add a little bit of crispness on top. That's what analog will do. So you, you run analog gear a little bit harder on purpose uh, till you like the sound. So you saturate the sound. And in the digital domain, you have a finite uh, peak limit so there's a you know a peak capability of the medium, which in digital domain would be digital domain would be zero dB full scale. So full scale is would be full scale pulse code modulation. So all the bits are true. And now if you want to push beyond that, the computer is not going to pull out another you know more bits and then expand the the dynamic range. The converter won't do that for you. It'll just cut it off. It'll say, well, this is all you get. And um, then you have hard clipping versus um, the saturation you would get in the analog domain. Okay, really interesting. I clearly need to go to the music production boot camp to learn <laughs> all the stuff because I think it sounds really, really interesting. And, you know, like I said, I think musicians love this. But one of the things that we were going to talk about is do you have to be a musician to be a recording engineer? Like, do you have to have those mu musicians' ears? Well, you don't have to, and it depends on what, what you want to do. If you want to go into post and film, um, dialogue, you not necessarily have to be a musician, but it really helps if you want to go into music. So you don't have to be a virtuoso guitar player to record guitar, but it definitely helps if you've seen it done or if you've played in the band and you know what what's important for guitarists, right? Um, let's say you want to record a classical piece um, or you want to do live sound for classical music. If you can read music, that is extremely important. Or... The big thing is also exposure, right? If you've never sat in with, an, with a jazz band, you never sat in an orchestra, you never sat in a wind ensemble, how do you know how it's really supposed to sound like? If I would just give you the, the individual tracks of you know, wind ensemble recording or a big band recording, how would you know what is the right mix? What is the right, you know, um, the right way to put it all together? Whereas if you have uh, you know, experience playing in an ensemble, then it definitely helps. And if you have experience playing as a musician, then you also, it'll be easier for you to work with musicians, if that makes sense. And no, that actually like, makes a lot of sense yeah. because I, if you're, you're going to be conversing with them, you need to know their language. Yeah, if you speak the same language, it definitely helps. And um, you know, we've done listening uh, tests and listening, like subjective listening evaluations 
where musicians do better in also technical hearing. So hearing tiny differences in you know tiny artifacts in music or something that an MP3 would cause better than people who do not have musical ear training. So musical ear training actually really helps the brain hear better. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I mean, as, a, as an educator in, in front of a in front of a band, you know, you're trying to teach them how to use their ears, how to listen for all those distinctions of tuning and sound and timbre and everything. And so having that skill, if I have those ears, it seems to me that would be a huge head start to making sure that what I'm going to be engineering and recording and mixing and whatever is going to sound the way it ought to. Mm hmm. Yeah, makes perfect sense. So what happens if I'm a student or like, who sh is this for students or adults or who, who shows up at the, at the music production boot camp? So typically it's high school students who show up there and then it's, you know, um, first of all, if they go to a boot camp, they're already seriously enough, serious enough about it that they, you know, um, want to do this. A lot of times they already have Fruity Loops or they have Ableton and it's one of those, you know, typical um, gateway drugs into music production that they, that they're already been working with and they've done usually you know, the, the common denominator is like beat making or something like that. Um, and students will do that. So it's kind of the pattern that I see where students will do this for one or two years. They will make beats and they'll then they'll try to copy a beat from some hip hop thing and then it's something sampled or maybe it's like a small orchestra passage that was sampled. And that is a fantastic way then for them to get more interested in music. So they want to try to recreate, you know, uh, different facets of, of that beat. And then at one point, it actually requires them to learn more about music or get more into it. Or they want to make a recording. They make a recording in their bedroom um, and they feel like, wow, this recording really sucked. I wonder why. So maybe then they'll go to, because um, they say, well, you know, I think I can sing well. Or I think I play my instrument well. So what went wrong? And then they'll go to something in a professional environment. So here you have a multi-million dollar facility so if it doesn't sound good here, you know, you're probably doing something wrong. So this, <laughs> this helps you then to exclude the equipment as the, as the factor. And it, it's going to be, you know, it's a, it's a great reality check and kind of an ear opener as to, okay, this is the top of the spectrum. Um, this is what it can sound like with top end equipment. Here are the things that I can then do. What's important for us is that the students walk away from the camp with, with things that they can apply. So I don't want them to walk away. It's like, oh, okay, now I got to save. I need just twelve million dollars, and then I can get that same. <laughs> I can get that same recording. What I want them to understand is that it should be really, you know, transferable concepts where they say, okay, I have to avoid these reflections. I have to make sure I avoid, you know, um, getting the destructive interference. I want to make sure that I understand my levels. I want to understand how I use the plugins. So they should walk away being enriched. Um, in knowledge to apply to the things they have, even if they have almost nothing, when they come back from boot camp, I want them to be able to apply uh, all the knowledge in the in the most simplistic ways to be successful. Yeah, that's really cool. That makes perfect sense too. Like they're learning basically the nuts and bolts of how it works and and the terminology and how how to use different things. Um, like how exciting if this was something if i was a high school student and i was sort of like interested in this and thought it was cool and i'm doing trying to do some of mine like the, the idea of being able to spend a week in this multi-million dollar facility with somebody that knows what they're doing that's going to guide me through it and teach me some stuff like what an incredible opportunity that is like that's very cool that that is being offered um and the other thing cool that i love christoph also is that um like technology today everybody has the ability to sort of do this. You know what I mean? Like I have friends that I don't know if it's on their, their iPad or their phone or their computer, or whatever, but like they have these tools that it's very easy to sort of start doing this on your own. But um, I, I guess if I was interested in it and I'm doing that, like you said, I, at a certain point where I'm like, Oh, I need to know a few things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. It, it means that the market in terms of knowledge and in terms of accessibility is, you know, we can come back to the word saturated, right? The market is almost saturated. You can go to YouTube and there's great, there's really great material on there. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll probably overlap with stuff you can, you can watch on YouTube. Um, you can get software and just sit down and with, with, with a mediocre laptop, do something that would have been impossible to do in like the mid eighties or something like that in terms of digital. However, you want to be in a space where you can have the correct experiential learning and you want to be with someone who can point out a certain difference between two things. So you want to 
you know, kind of build on the, or get, you know, um, benefit from the experience of the instructors, right? We're, we're only here because we've done this probably wrong a million times and we've learned from that. So now we hear something, we can tell you right away what's wrong, or we can show you right away one of the correct ways to do it. And it's all about the experience. You cannot get the studio hands-on experience in your bedroom. Yeah, everybody, I'm talking to Dr. Christoph Thompson, and this, we're talking about the Music Production Boot Camp at the Music for All Summer Symposium. Such a great opportunity to get, like you said, sort of get this hands-on experience that you need. And I love the idea that here's somebody standing next to me that like knows how it works, can identify those problems. Sort of like for me, Christoph, I can stand in front of a marching band and watch a drill move go really wrong, and I know how to fix it because I've done that a thousand times and I've made a bunch of mistakes. Same kind of thing for you. I wouldn't know how to fix a sound problem in, in music production, but I love that you would and you could teach that to me. Yeah. It's very cool. All right, so what's different this year? Uh, like, what there, Are there new things for 2022 that are, that are uh, gonna be happening at the music production bootcamp? Um, we, the, I'll tell you the things that we've maintained and I'll tell you a couple of the new things. So what we're already doing is there'll be uh, acoustics so you understand how does the sound even work. Uh, recording technology, with, with technology always the thing, technology doesn't stop. So it's always something new that we're adding into it. So you have your basic things that will never change, which is your microphone technology and things like that. The analog things are kind of established. That stays the same. We're adding to that now um, Ableton. The, the software, it's um, extremely popular with high schoolers. It has a really shallow learning curve. Um, we're getting an Ableton certified instructor, uh, Dan Giffen, to work with the students. Um, he's... Uh, is really you know one of the who is who in the Ableton world. Um, he can really help the students with creating these beats and things like that. And we're bringing those those kind of uh, experiences in because we want to be as inclusive as possible, right? It shouldn't just be re we're recording rock and we're recording jazz and acoustic and classical, but there's also you know so many things in between. It's not a um, it's not really kind of a, you know, a binary type of thing. So there's so many new trends that constantly come in. So Ableton is, is one of those important things. So we're going to have a whole week of just you know, also beat making. So you have your recording technology. You have recording sessions every afternoon. We do a recording session. We'll say, okay, today we're going to focus on drums. Now we're going to focus on vocals. Here's how you do keyboards in the rhythm section and so on. And then in the end, you, we have a big tracking session where we do a whole band. So professional musicians come in, we mic them up, the students do this hands-on, um, we'll track them and then we'll mix them. So it's a, the whole week kind of builds up towards this uh, climactic big recording session at the end. This is really fun. Like this makes me want to come to this. I mean, I know it's not for me, everybody, probably, but I mean, I guess I could, but no, I mean, but like imagine for a high school student who's interested in this, what a great opportunity and hands-on, um, you're learning by doing, you're in the studio. I, it sounds really cool. I, I love everything you're saying. Everybody, we're talking about this. this is the music the music production boot camp at the Music for All Summer Symposium. Back this year, June 27th through July 2nd. Um, Dr. Christoph Thompson will be one of the people that's there helping the students to guide through this. If you know a student that is into sort of music engineering, thinks they might want to do that kind of thing or enjoys doing it on their own. Wow, Christoph, what an opportunity for a high school student to like have a, a life-changing experience. Absolutely. It's a great on-ramp. Also, you know, a lot of times we get students who are already enrolled for um, our degree. So students who are just graduated high school and or students who are juniors and they want to say, want to see, is this really for me? Because you're a whole week in the studio all day. And that's also not for everybody. You know, it can be also a great experience to say, wow, I hate being in the recording studio. This is not what I what I like at all. <laughs> thank God I'm not going to go for this degree. And then for most students, it's like, yes, this is exactly how I imagined it would be I'm in the recording studio. I'm doing all that. So, yeah. yeah, but that makes perfect sense. Like, you're right. If I was thinking about doing this, um, I should test it out. You know, it's like I always feel for those like there are every now and then there's a music education student who goes all the way through the degree and then they do their student teaching. And they're like, oh, I don't like this. So it's like, no, you need to be out there in front of students early to make sure that you love that you love being in the school you love the challenges and what that means so that makes perfect sense to me i'm getting there test it out make sure have an experience 
Um, it, yeah, it sounds yeah. really cool. And it is great also for people who want to get into education. If you now look at high schools, you know, you have really great high school um, uh, band programs or high school music instructors that actually get into music technology, that actually want to create a music technology program at their high schools. So um, students who want to get into education, being exposed to this is, is another, you know, that's another great uh, situation for them. Well, not only that, but like there's a lot of what you're talking about in the modern world of the marching arts. I mean, marching bands, indoor drum lines, especially like it's all about the mics and the sounds and the connections and the mixing and the I mean, it's very much into it. And and the percussion guys are are in that and they're figuring that out because they tend to have to be the ones to do that. But like there's a lot to learn for everybody here. Absolutely. Well, the, the, you know, I don't want to call it the silver lining, but I guess the silver lining of the COVID crisis was it kind of exposed to a lot of educators how little they know about audio and how much they suddenly needed. They always needed the audio guys. Uh, we're so important. Uh, but they, uh, uh, it, it kind of, you know, it, it got to the point where a lot of audio guys had to start turning down work, whereas like the performers had to file for unemployment. The audio guys and audio video guys got so busy making videos and creating streams and helping, you know, helping out how to stream a concert and how to do it properly. Um, so these skills are really essential. If you're a musician or not, if you're an educator, it's, it's definitely something that's not going to go away. And I'm really happy that I can share my passion for this with the students when they come in. Well, it's very cool. Everybody, we're talking about the Summer Symposium, Music for All Summer Symposium, June 27th through July 2nd, back this year. Dr. Christoph Thompson will be there and running that uh, music production boot camp. Christoph, it sounds really exciting. I got to tell you, I, I just think this is an amazing opportunity. Uh, so I can think of all kinds of people that could use this week of sort of immersive um, experiences and learning all this, all this information. Um, especially I like your idea of sort of testing it out. Is this something I might want to do? Is this something I might want to go to school for? Is this something I might want to make a career out of? Having a week in a, you know, major facility, studio, where I can test that out, I really like that idea. Yeah, we're trying to be as inclusive as possible into who can, who can participate and who can enjoy this. And it's not like you don't need to know, you know, uh, about electricity in order to get microphone signal into somewhere. We're here for that, why we're helping the students out. It's, you know, we're here to to guide them. We're, we don't micromanage the students at every step of the way. We're just here as, you know, learning partners with them. And, you know, we're just, we're sharing our sandbox with the students as they come in and we just have, you know, certain lessons and everything is kind of focused at some, to some kind of project, some kind of goal we want to accomplish for that day. I think you have a pretty cool job. You have a pretty cool life, Christoph. Like you're you're doing the sound stuff. You're, you're doing engineering. You're you're uh, you're in that world. It sounds fascinating to me. I think most musicians think it's very cool. Um, and so, uh, do you feel like one of the cool kids on the block and around the world of musicians? Uh, I guess once you once you do it for a living every day, you know it, it's probably. Um, once once it's your job, there are great days, and then there's other days where you just you know it's probably. Um, whatever comes along, I have to record or not, <laughs> you know, it's, so it's, it, you know, um, I get it. I, I get, I definitely get the most excited when I can kind of share it when, you know, cause I can always think back to when I was a student who was looking from the outside in into how, wow, this is magic. How does this even work? You know? And when it was so inaccessible, I don't want to date myself, but when I just started, things were still extremely expensive and it was really hard to get a professional level studio recording and now the, the equipment is so much more accessible, but the knowledge you still need to gather, the experience, you can't just get the, you can't buy the experience, right? You have to still build that up. And the best thing is if you have good mentorship and people who will, who will save you time by guiding you in the right direction with patience and experience. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. You can buy that student a Gemeinhart flute, but man, you still got to teach them how to play. Yeah. There's a lot of information they need. So I can see that sort of, that's my analogy there. This has been so much fun talking to you, Dr. Christoph Thompson. Um, everybody go to camp.musicforall.org to learn more about all this stuff to sign up. Um, Christoph, I hope you have a fantastic experience this year again at the Summer Symposium. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And thanks for talking to me. Yeah, it was really fun. Thanks everybody for watching.